All right, so we start off by clicking create a new scribe. Let's go ahead and look at the bottom buttons on the right side since they will be the buttons you use the most. On the left, we have the add image button. Once you click it, VideoScribe will load its library of images that you can use for any project. There will be some images that are locked behind a paywall, so you have to pay for them if you want to use them. We'll avoid these because you really don't need them, and I only choose the free ones. Once you select an image, it'll pop up in the center of your scribe as well as the timeline. I'll go over more things about the timeline in a later lesson. For now, let's move on to the next button, which is the text button. Once you click the text button, a text field will pop up for you to type the text that you want. So let's just type something real quick. And once again, it'll pop up in the center of the scribe. Once again, I'll cover more on how to change text and whatnot in a different lesson. For this one, we're just gonna cover every button first. All right, so here is the chart button. This is actually a button I hardly ever touch just because I personally don't think it looks very good. But if you want a super simple pie chart or bar chart, then you can use this button to create it. Just fill in the options based on the examples and there you go. Here's a pie chart and I'll also show you guys how it looks as a bar chart. Once again, I don't think it looks that great, but if you want to use it, it's there. Moving on. The arrow buttons are a bit counterintuitive. The left arrow, if you click it, it actually makes the frame move to the right and vice versa for the right arrow. Same thing for the up and down arrow. You'll actually find these arrows to be helpful at times when you want to keep your scribe centered or move in a very precise manner because the alternative is dragging around the scribe, which is pretty unprecise at times. The magnifying glasses are there for zooming in and out but I tend not to use them too much because they increment in very odd percentages sometimes. What I use more often is the actual percentage value. You can click on the number and a text field will pop up allowing you to type in your percentage value. Videoscribe suggests that you try and keep your percentage values in between 50% and 500%. Anyways, moving on, the fit to screen button can be helpful in some cases, but I don't use it too often because what it does is make the camera view show every single object of the scribe. Most of the time for larger scribes, we're not going to want to view all the objects in the scribe. So this button becomes pretty useless after creating more than one scene. Moving back to the bottom, we have the set camera to current position button. This button will be used very often to compose our scenes. In order to use it, you need to select an object, change the zoom and camera view of where you want the frame to be when this object is being animated, and then click the button. Now when we play and the object is being drawn, the camera will move to the position we set it to. You can also set the camera position of multiple objects at once by selecting an object, holding shift, and then clicking another object, then hitting the camera position button. The button to the right of it will clear the camera position and make it so that the default camera position which follows the object around is in play. We hardly ever actually want that because the composition of the frame tends to just look bad for the default camera position. So always be purposeful and use the set camera position button. The last button here won't be used too often. It's only used to unhide elements on the timeline that you have hidden. Most of the time we won't really be hiding elements so that's not something to worry about. Now let's move on to the buttons on the top left. These buttons I pretty much never touch because I just use the shortcut keys instead. They're the same as most programs for save, cut, copy, and paste. That is command S, X, C, and V respectively on a Mac, or control if you're on a PC. Moving on to the buttons on the top right. Going from the left side to the right side, we have the music button, which I never use because I don't really like the music from VideoScribe but you can go ahead and give it a listen and see if you find one you like. I'll show you where you can find some better music in a different lesson. Next, we have the voiceover button. I never actually record the voiceover on VideoScribe. I record it on a different program called Adobe Audition and then click the import MP3 button on the bottom left. Once you've imported a voiceover, the button will turn blue. The next button is the background color button. As of late, I've been changing the background color of my scribes on YouTube just as a personal color choice. Currently, I do a lot of scribes where I choose the third from the top, which is a really dark gray. 
For professional freelancing, I pretty much always keep it on the classic white, and I would suggest you keep it on the white as well, unless your client asks for another color. For personal choices, like if you were to do this for YouTube, I would suggest trying out colors for yourself just because there's already so many white whiteboard animations out there, so changing it to a different color can help you stand out, as long as you're keeping it to colors that are easy to watch. Moving on, I personally do not add any textures or a vignette. I think the vignette is way too strong and it's much more easily added and controlled on Premiere, which I'll show you how to do in a later lesson. The next button is the default hand button, which will take you to the hand you'll be seeing for the drawings. I tend to just keep it as the one VideoScribe chooses for me since I don't really have too much of a preference for hands, but they have plenty of different ones if you do want to change it. Next, we have the play from start button, which is essentially just a play the scribe button. You won't use this button as often as you'll be right clicking an object and hitting play from there. And that's pretty much what the next button does, except it's all the way up here, so it's not very accessible. So that's why we much rather right click and hit play from here. And finally, the publish or export button. I normally do not have the zoom at end checked because I like to control how the last seconds of my scribe look. And I download the scribes as QuickTime or MOV files as 1080p, and I normally go for 30 frames per seconds for my YouTube videos, but feel free to change the frames per seconds to a higher one if you want it to be smoother. 45 is a good choice. After that, you just name your scribe file and select the destination to where you want it to be downloaded to. And the download process will begin. All right. That is what every button does on this workspace. The assignment for this video is to go through each button and press it. Use it. Familiarize yourself with the options at your fingertips. Watching it is not enough to really get a grasp of it. You'll really actually need to practice it if you want to become highly efficient with the process. In the next video, we'll talk more about the image and text settings as well as the timeline.